just getting right down to the start now. We've got uh, under 30 seconds to go. Quite a lot of intensity at the line. We see uh, Nielsen and o Nielsen, Denmark 11, just sheeting in. They're all sheeting in to go, and that's the signal. They're off. Just a signal, signal. So I, that's a clean start for everyone. Both Nielsen and Grail have got off the line cleanly as Grail goes through our screen to the right, and Nielsen is holding her lane on starboard going to the left. Initially, I'd say that uh, Grail might have an advantage here. The right side of the course is quite wide. She'll have a lot, be able to do a lot of sailing. Oh, both the Danes tack. So there won't be quite as much separation. It didn't look like Nielsen got quite the start she wanted, and she's had to tack and duck Yersok, Germany, who, is, uh, who came off the pin ahead of her. And she's now chasing off to the right to uh, go the same direction as the Brazilians. We can see this is the tack that has the swell underneath it. So the girls are having to deal with very changing speeds as they ride the waves down. You can see Grail right there surfing waves. She's at full plane right now. They're almost double trapping. And then as they get off the plane, they have to suck inside the boat as the pressure decreases. Very difficult sailing as she approaches the boundary and goes for her first tack. She'll be on starboard once she tacks, so she'll have right away. And we see the Swedes on her hip tack at the same time. Not the biggest lane for Grail. Um, she, she should be able to survive there, but it, she'll have to sail well to keep her pressure. The Swedes are just not handling it quite as well. We see Jena, Denmark 136, duck, but Ida, Nielsen, Denmark 11, tacks underneath. And she looks like she's ahead of the Swedes to me. Um, Martine Grail, though, could be on ley line for the mark. So, no, probably not with her, with, but uh, this is going to be a difficult uh, setup here for Nielsen. She's going to have to pinch off Klinga, make attack, and then avoid uh, Grail when she comes back. Meanwhile, the French, Stayart, has crossed both boats. And let's see if she's able to, and she crosses Brazil as well. So the leaders are coming from the left. The next boat that's trying to cross is... Germany 6, that's your sock, and she, she crosses cleanly as well. And then we haven't talked about Dobson yet, GBR 22. She's now in the middle of the screen. It looks like Dobson and looks like Dobson and your sock are the two leaders right now. Dobson from GBR 22, your sock, Germany 6. They both have one tack left to go to get to this mark. Yeah, your sock is cleared. Jenna Hansen from Denmark 136. So it's either Dobson or Yersok in the lead of this first race. Stayart's also quite wide on the ley line, but I think Yersok, where she tacked, that should be ley line. So I think it's going to be Yersok who uh, got the best start at the boat end. Just a single tack. Oh, that's Dobson just Lee bowing Yersok. If, oh, and the Spanish have come in ahead as well. So the left side is really paid. We've now got three boats all stacked up, trying to make the windward mark here on starboard. And it looks like the Spaniards. That is Echigoyen. First trip to the medal race, and they're going to be around the first mark first as they surge ahead, uh, able to pinch out both the Brits and the Germans. Yeah, that's the Spanish round first. Good for them. Dobson in second. Yersok in third. As I mentioned uh, at the start of the broadcast, these races are only 10 minutes long, two laps. So we'll expect the action to be fast and furious. That is Lutz, round in fourth place. Quite slowly, she jibes set to clear her air. And let's see, yeah, she has a decent jibe set. The spinnaker's filling. Stare at round in fourth. Fifth, rather. And that's Grail in sixth, followed by Nielsen in seventh. So not a lot of separation so far between Grail and Nielsen in our battle for the lead. In our battle for the bronze, Dobson is looking to uh, lay a marker down here with a top finish and uh, that should help her with her already eight point lead over the ne over the fourth place boat who's the Netherlands okay meanwhile on the far left of the screen we'll go see Echigoyen go for her jibe she's gone almost all the way to the boundary goes for a nice clean jibe and she should be on ley line for these lured marks so as long as the breeze holds for her should be quite a clean route I am looking to the far side of the course where we saw Lutz uh, jibe set. She looks to me like she's in pressure and she's just going for her jibe now. So it looks to me like a little bit of pressure on the right side of the course, the opposite side that our leaders came from, but I don't think it'll be enough for them to leapfrog, but it definitely could be enough to put some pressure on. 
Dobson in the blue spinnaker just gone for her drive. She's still ahead of Lutz. So uh, things are, are staying quite stable with the lead on this first downwind. Uh, Dobson and Jersok coming together. Jersok in the black spinnaker with the SAP logo. Jibes right on Dobson's line. Doesn't give her any room. And meanwhile, in the white spinnaker, we can see Echegoyen sinking low so that she doesn't have to do any more jibes as she comes into the lead of this first lured mark. Beautifully sailed. Very simple for her, for Echegoyen. She uh, made it to the mark. Straight set, one jibe, soaked a little bit to get to the mark. Your sock, though, Germany 6, is a speedster, and uh, she's now splitting tacks with Echegoyen and will have clean air almost the entire way. So looking good for them. Uh, Dobson just coming in very slowly to the lured mark. Tina Lutz. No, she's going to have to go above. Dobson's in round in third. Stayart in fourth. So uh, split tacks so far. Teams going to the right early are having to deal with some uh, wind shadows of the boats coming downwind. We now see Nielsen in the uh, Lindbergh spinnaker going the same direction as Grail. Grail just went around the go left mark and now Nielsen goes the same way. She's got good speed. It's very tempting to try an extra maneuver to, to shave a few meters off the distance, but speed, is, speed and flow around these lured marks is a very good weapon to have. And that was a very good rounding from Nielsen, a very mature play there as she follows Grail to the left side of the course. Why don't we pan around to our leader here, Sam. Uh, she'll be going for her tack soon on the uh, far right of the course. We can see the, there she goes for her tack right now. So she's cleared her air from the leeward mark and uh, hasn't gone all the way to the boundary. She tacked a little bit early, either because she's on the ley line or because she felt that she didn't want to give quite as much of a gap between her and the girls going left. Stayart continues to go to the right. Stayart's our uh, 2013 bronze medalist, burst onto the scene. Uh, that was her first serious regatta of her campaign after uh, being coming a school teacher for about a year and then uh, decided she hadn't uh, lost the itch to go sailing and she sailed very consistently winning the North Americans and Miami Olympic classes. Had a bit of trouble this week, especially in the breezier conditions midweek. We saw her sitting outside of the places of the medal of the to get into the finals for most of the week, but in the final day she had another a couple good races like we've uh, seen so often from her and has come in in eighth place on 97 points uh, with the ability to move up quite easily into the uh, fourth or so range. Uh, things have to go quite well for her. Meanwhile, middle of the course, we see the Spanish not putting a step wrong. Uh, sailing across, they've, man they're, they've easily covered Yersok, who didn't seem to have a ton of pressure on the left side. Go for their attack. They've got two more attacks to go to the mark. There's going to be a cross coming up here uh, between the Germans and the French. Germans did round in second at the leeward gate, but it looks to me like the French might have them here, it's, or it'll certainly be close. No, the Germans are going to cross, so there's still a couple boat lengths ahead, but it's very close. This final downwind might have something in it. Sarah Stayart of France will be looking, oh, she's gone for her tack now, so she wasn't on ley line. Two more tacks. That'll give Yersok a nice little bit of breathing room, and we'll see now what the uh, situation is between Dobson and Stayart, as the two of them should be reasonably close to each other. Dobson, GBR 22, coming across on port, and uh, Stayart's back on starboard, and Dobson goes for the duck. So Stayart's gained a place on this uh, second beat, and Dobson, Dobson's dropped back a little bit. She was uh, in a, quite a comfortable third of that first beat, and now ooh, just a bit of a slow tack there. And Grail's back in the mix. She had to duck uh, the French and now ducks the British. Doing well there. She had a good, very good tack. So Grail's caught up a lot of distance and she'll be in an attacking mood on this downwind. We've seen her sail very well through the year. Okay, so the girls are jibe setting the leaders. We've got the white spinnaker of Echegoyen in the lead just outside her, your sock. Maybe I'll just list off. So Grail is round in fifth. Must be a right wind shift as all the girls are jibe setting. Let's see what Grail does. 
No, Grail straight sets. So Grail doesn't follow the trend. She's going for separation. She must be in an attacking mood. Immediately behind her is Nielsen. They're the two in the battle for the lead, and Nielsen does go for the jibe set. So it could, uh, could be a points changer on this downwind. Nielsen in the black spinnaker with the Lindbergh logo goes for the jibe set and uh, separates from Grail as much as possible. We'll just pan back to our leaders. We've got Echegoyen in the white spinnaker. She'll be coming up on the ley line for the final jibe to the finish. Two lap race. And there she goes for her jibe. Very clean. Good solid boat handling. Um, the Spanish duo spent their winter in Santander and then went to Miami and have now come here to Palma for a month and a half. I asked them if they thought it was the local conditions that have helped them out so much this week and they said that it was just that it was the conditions were so good they were able to train almost every day and get lots of hours in the boat which is what they needed so they're uh th they're bursting on the scene the crew's a gold medalist from the Engl from the match racing in london and uh we saw them placing in the mid-teens for the most of 2013 but they've clearly announced uh, that they're one of the teams to be reckoned with here in 2014. just one more jibe to go to the finish we saw your sock Catch some meters downwind. She's typically quite fast in the light winds. And, uh, but the Spanish are very close to the line here. A, a smooth jibe and there should be no issues. Jersok does have a higher line there. I'm surprised the Spanish waited so long to make their jibe. But in the end, it's no problem. They're through with the win. And Jersok in second. The breeze has just picked up a little bit here. We've got a puff in. And that's going to be stay arc through into fourth, third. Dobson, solid race into fourth. And now we see uh, the blue spinnaker, I believe, is Grail. So she's uh, kept her fifth, and she's actually got a boat in between. Uh, herself and Nielsen. Well, it's, not, it's not over yet. The, we see Nielsen coming in with a lot of speed, looking to go over top of, of Lutz, Germany 161. I think Lutz has got her spinnaker filling, and that's the Brazilians through the line, and the Germans surge to the line as well, with the Swedes coming in after Nielsen. So a very tight finish from 5th uh, through 7th. But that's a couple extra points to Grail. And then, uh, then we've got Beckering through in ninth, and uh, Jana Hansen struggled right from the start, back in 10th position here.